Last week, we did attributes of royalty, honor. You guys remember honor? ¿Se acuerdan del honor? Fue el atributo de realeza de la semana pasada. Tonight, we're doing another one of the attributes of uh, honor, I mean, of royalty, which is courage. Y esta noche vamos a hablar del otro atributo de la realeza, que es la valentía. Now, I want to remind you, we have the whole book for sale back there. Tenemos el libro entero a la venta ahí atrás, okay? It's impossible to cover it all, so you want to get that to get the whole, the whole uh, class. ¿Quieres comprar ese libro? Para, en español se llama De Mendigo a Príncipe, es el de los zapatitos que está ahí atrás, ¿ok? Eh, Necesita ese libro porque es imposible cubrirlo todo y es maravilloso. Um, ok, that's all I'll say about that. Es todo lo que voy a decir acerca de eso. Let's go into, um, into the notes. Vamos a entrar a las notas. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. And that scripture is also in Joshua 1.9. Esta escritura está también en Josué 1.9, pero en Deuteronomio 31.6 dice, Sé fuerte y valiente, no tengas temor de ellos, porque el Señor tu Dios va contigo. Él nunca te dejará ni te desamparará. All right, so, see, the instruction is, be strong and courageous, be brave. You know why? Because God has put that inside of us. The Bible tells us, He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. La Biblia nos dice que Él no nos dio espíritu de temor, por eso nos dice... Sé fuerte y valiente. ¿Por qué? Porque ya lo puso ahí adentro. Ya lo puso ahí adentro. Él no nos dio espíritu de temor, sino de poder, amor y dominio propio, ¿verdad? Eso nos dice la palabra. Sí, it's amazing. God is not telling us to do something that goes against our nature. He's telling us to do something that He's already equipped us with. Él nos está Diciendo que hagamos algo con lo que ya nos equipó. It'd be a little hard if he was saying, be brave, and, and he's never put power inside of us, and, and all there is is fear inside of us. Sería difícil que nos dijera, sé valientes, si solamente hay temor adentro de nosotros, y él nunca nos ha dado lo que necesitamos para ser valientes. In other words, he's already put it inside you. Now he's telling you, hey, you know, right there, use that. Be strong and courageous. I am with you. Y él ya lo puso ahí adentro de ti, te dice, sé valiente y sé fuerte, ya lo puse ahí adentro de ti. Fear wants to creep in, el temor quiere entrar, but he's reminding us, be strong and courageous, I am with you, I am in you. Sé fuerte y valiente, estoy contigo y estoy dentro de ti. Remember how on Sunday I told you, however many kids you have, God has given you, everything is inside of you, everything that you need to raise them in a godly way. Because He gives you according to your ability, right? If you have a business, if you have a job, if you have whatever area of influence, He's already given you what you need to be successful in it. It's in you already. Lo que sea que Él te haya dado, sean hijos, o sea un negocio, o sea un área de influencia, Él ya puso dentro de ti todo lo que necesitas para ser exitoso. It's in you already. You don't have to struggle for it. You just have to believe and walk into it. Be strong and courageous. Not fearful. Do not fret. Sé fuerte y sé valiente. Ya está dentro de ti. No tengas miedo. Are you with me? ¿Estás conmigo? <clears throat> Be brave. Be bold. <laughs> There's a song like that. For the Lord your God. Okay. Number one, a person that feels insignificant could never fight for the life of another one. Una persona, número uno, una persona que se siente insignificante jamás podría luchar por la vida de otro. Remember, insignificance is one of the um, characteristics of the pauper mentality, poverty mentality, or slave mentality. La, el sentirse insignificante es uno de los atributos de la mentalidad de pobreza o de esclavo. So whenever you feel insignificance, that's poverty, that's slave mentality, that's not royalty. Cuando te sientas insignificante, eso es, eso es, eso es mentalidad de pobreza, eso es esclavitud, eso no es realeza. 
feelings of insignificance will either we'll say that later listen Moses remember when Moses saved the Hebrew slave that was being beat up by the um, by the by the slave master ¿Te acuerdas cuando Moisés salvó al, al esclavo hebreo que estaba siendo golpeado y abusado por el, uh, el jefe de los esclavos? ¿Cómo se llama? Capatazo. ¿Sí, el capataz? You guys remember that story? ¿Se acuerdan de esa historia? Or if not, you have to go read it. You know why Moses was able to stand up and save his life? Because Moses was raised in the palace. Moses grew up as royalty and had significance inside of him. And when, when he had significance inside of him, God knew he was setting him up not, not just to save that slave, but to deliver the whole nation. Moisés nació y creció en el palacio como realeza. Cuando creces como realeza, tienes significancia. ¿Sí? Y por eso es que Dios lo puso ahí para que estuviera listo, no solamente para salvar a ese esclavo hebreo, sino a toda la nación de Israel. Go, wow, I didn't know that. Come on, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, isn't that crazy? Like, he used the one that was not in, in the slaves. Usó al que no creció con los esclavos. And he set him up for that. That's why it's so important that if we're going to deliver and influence and lead other people into freedom, that we are not walking as slaves or in poverty mentality. Por eso es tan importante que si vamos a liberar a otros y a guiar a otros a su libertad, que nosotros no seamos esclavos o tengamos mentalidad de pobreza, sino de realeza. Because, number one, a person that feels insignificant could never fight for the life of another. Porque una persona que se siente insignificante jamás podría luchar por la vida de otro. You with me? ¿Están conmigo? Okay. A pauper can only think of self-preservation. Un esclavo o un pobre solamente piensa en preservar su propia vida, en sobrevivencia. But someone with significance, a royal, is not even concerned with his own needs or his own life. He's taken care of. He can just take care of other people. He can watch over others. He can fight for others. He can fight for justice. Si el pobre está enfocado en preservar su propia vida, pero alguien en la realeza no está ocupado con su propia vida. A healthy one, right? Number two, número dos. Most people are concerned with saving their own lives rather than living sacrificially. La mayoría de las personas están preocupadas en cómo salvar su propia vida en vez de vivir sacrificadamente. And now let me, let me clarify and tell you what I'm not saying. Te voy a decir lo que no estoy diciendo. Jesus was a sacrifice. He died. He gave his life. We don't need to sacrifice our own. Nosotros no necesitamos sacrificar nuestra vida como Jesús. Él lo hizo. Él murió. Él es el sacrificio perfecto. What I'm talking about is laying down some of our rights or selfish concerns to help others. Lo que estoy hablando es de dejar nuestras propias preocupaciones egoístas para ayudar a otros. Okay? So, like Moses did. You know, Moses, he risked a lot by doing that. Moisés arriesgó mucho al hacer eso. You know, um, statistics show that, las estadísticas muestran that if, um, let's just say that a, a evil is happening. Either somebody's getting robbed Or, or somebody, somebody just passes out in the middle of a crowd. Si alguien está, lo están asaltando, o si alguien este, eh, se desmaya en medio de una multitud. The bigger the crowd, the smaller the chance that anybody will do anything. Entre más grande la multitud, menor es el chance de que alguien haga algo. You know why? ¿Sabes por qué? Because everybody's thinking somebody else will do it. Porque todos están pensando alguien más lo va a hacer. So you know what some of these inhumane people do? They pull out their phone. Start videotaping it. Y lo que alguna de esta gente inhumana hace en vez es sacar su teléfono y empezar a grabarlo. 
That's why you see horrible videos on Facebook sometimes and you go, why isn't anybody doing anything? Por eso es que a veces ves videos horribles en, en los medios sociales o en Facebook y dices, ¿por qué nadie está haciendo nada? The more people there is, the less chance somebody will do anything. Entre más gente hay, el chance de que alguien haga algo es menor. <laughs> And the same statistics show that the less people there is, the greater the chance that somebody will do something. Y las estadísticas muestran también que entre menos gente haya, más grande es el, la probabilidad de que alguien va a hacer algo. You know why? Because they think, if I don't do this, nobody will. Porque piensan, si yo no hago algo, nadie va a hacer nada. And a lot of people are just watching evil happening without doing anything. Y mucha gente está viendo la maldad suceder sin hacer nada. Injustice happening in front of them without doing anything. Injusticia suceder sin hacer nada. But a royalty, royal, a, a prince will risk their life and save someone and do something. Pero alguien con significancia, algún, alguien de la realeza va a hacer algo y va a arriesgar su vida. Number three, survival mentality has no place in the hearts and minds of the king's children. La mentalidad número tres de sobrevivencia no tiene lugar en los corazones y mentes de los hijos del rey. I'm going to read a few scriptures. Voy a leer unas cuantas escrituras. En las mentes de los hijos del rey. Matthew 16, uh, verse 25. Oh, it's right there. It says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. ¿Sí? Dice, si tratas de salvar tu vida, la perderás. Pero si das tu vida por mí, la salvarás. You remember Sunday I was talking about how it's an upside down kingdom? ¿Se acuerdan el domingo hablé que es un reino de cabeza? ¿Sí? The kingdom of God. In the world, the more you hold on to, the more you have. En el mundo, entre más te agarras, más tienes. The more you're a dam, entre más presa eres, más tienes, right? But in the, in the kingdom of God, the more you give, the more you receive. En el reino de Dios, entre más das, más recibes. Well, it's the same thing with your life. The more you hold on to your life and try to preserve your life and survive, see, you will lose it. But he who gives his life up for his sake will save it. Pero el que da su vida, sí, como Jesús la dio, la salvará. ¿Están conmigo? ¿You with me? Uh, Romans 6, let's go to Romans 6, 3 through 5. I love it. Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ, Jesus in baptism, um, we joined him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised with Uh, to life as he was. ¿Sí? Lo que nos está diciendo aquí en Romanos, uh, let's go back to verse 3, en Romanos 6, 3, dice, ¿Te has olvidado que cuando te uniste con Cristo Jesús en el bautismo, también moriste con Él? ¿Sí? Eh, porque morimos con Cristo, fuimos enterrados con Cristo en su bautismo, y así con Cristo fuimos resucitados de los muertos para la gloria del Padre, por eso ahora podemos vivir nuevas vidas. Y hemos sido unidos con Él en su muerte, también seremos resucitados con Él y vivir como Él vive. <coughs> so, what it's telling us again here is, we died with Christ. Morimos con Cristo. You're dead. Estás muerto. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Muerto, 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 muerto. <laughs> you gave up your life. And now there's a lot of people living, trying to get it back. Mucha gente está... Tratando de recuperar su vida antigua. But we died with him. So now we live for him. He lives through us. We're in a covenant. Estamos en un pacto. Él vive en nosotros y a través de nosotros. See, he lives in us to live through us. Él vive dentro de nosotros para vivir a través de nosotros. I'm going to say that again. He lives in us so that he can live through us. Él vive adentro de nosotros para que pueda vivir a través de nosotros. But many don't let him live through them. Pero muchos no lo dejan vivir a través de ellos. But he's a king. 
He's like, no, let me teach you how kings walk, what kings do. Y dice, es, es un rey. Dice, déjame enseñarte cómo caminan los reyes, cómo actúan los reyes, la realeza. He's trying to live through us. Él está tratando de vivir a través de nosotros. So we need to stop trying to save our lives and stop trying to save our reputation and stop trying to save, you know, everything and preserve our lives. Just let it go. Let it go. Déjalo ir. ¿sí? Deja de tratar de salvar tu vida. Va a estar toda tu vida preocupando por preservar tu vida y sobrevivir. Let him live through you. Deja que él viva a través de ti. And we're so concerned with our stuff and our rights and our things. And you know that we're so tight. We squeak when we walk. Estamos tan apretados y tan preocupados con nuestras cosas toda nuestra vida que rechinamos cuando caminamos. Hakuna Matata. I just love that scripture, you know. So many people trying to save their life and Jesus is like, try to save it, you're going to lose it. Just let go of your life and you will live true life. Estás tan preocupado de vivir, de proteger tu vida. Jesús dice, deja tu vida. Ya me la entregaste. Cuando dejas ir tu vida en Él, entonces empiezas a vivir. Number four. A believer is truly free. Oh, this is where we were going. Perfect. A believer is truly free to live when they love the gift of life, yet have no fear of death. Número cuatro. Aquí es exactamente a donde íbamos. Un creyente es verdaderamente libre para vivir cuando aman el regalo de la vida, aún sin tener temor a la muerte. Now just close your eyes for a moment. Just think about that. Fear of death is so huge in the lives of people. El temor a la muerte es tan grande en la vida de tanta gente. It's the biggest threat out there. Es la amenaza más grande allá. Yet Jesus is like, don't worry about your life. That's how you truly live with me. Jesús te dice, no te preocupes por tu vida. Así es como vives verdaderamente conmigo. In other words... You can't threaten us believers with heaven. No nos puedes amenazar a nosotros creyentes con el cielo. <laughs> Come on. I mean, terrorists know this and they don't even have it right. Los terroristas saben esto y ni siquiera tienen la verdad. But they believe in something so strongly that they're not threatened by the very death and they blow themselves up. Pero creen en algo tan fuerte que ni la misma muerte los amenaza. Y por eso hacen estas locuras. Can't threaten me with heaven. No me puedes amenazar con el cielo. Paul said, to live is Christ, to, live is gain, to die is gain. Pablo dijo, el vivir es Cristo y el morir es ganancia. How do you really feel about that? ¿Cómo realmente te sientes acerca de eso? How much power does the fear of death has over your life? ¿Cuánto poder tiene el temor de la muerte sobre tu vida? It's crazy to think about that, isn't it? <clears throat> Number five, whether we live or die, our job is to stand on the truth of the gospel. Número cinco, vivamos o muramos, nuestro trabajo es... Pararnos firmes en la verdad del Evangelio. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15:55. says, Oh death, <laughs> oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Christ Jesus. And verse 58 says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. See? Let's go back to um, the first uh, 55, please. Verse 55. He said, 
muerte, ¿dónde está tu victoria? Y muerte, ¿dónde está tu aguijón? ¿Sí? You know, it has a sting. That's, that's fear. It's like, oh, but what if you die? That's a sting. Pero ¿qué tal que te mueres? Ahí está el aguijón. Sí. That's why I said in the, in, the, in the previous point, I said, we love the gift of life. Amamos el regalo de la vida. But it, so I'm not saying go down to the freeway and drive 180 miles an hour because, whew, no estoy diciendo que te vayas a manejar a 180 millas por hora porque whew, no tengo miedo de morir. No, because we love and appreciate the gift of life. Porque amamos y apreciamos el don de la vida. But yet have no fear of death. Pero aún así no tener miedo a la muerte. That's two legs right there. Ahí hay dos piernas. You see that? Ven esto? It's like you're not crazy, nobody cares about life, and you're not in fear about death. No. You love the gift of life, and you also have no fear of death. Sino que amas el regalo de la vida, pero tampoco tienes miedo a la muerte. Think about this. What would it mean to your life if you, if you really thought this way? ¿Qué significaría eso en tu vida si realmente pensaras de esta manera? <sighs> Philippians 1.21 says, For to me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. That's, uh, that's the one scripture I was telling you guys. Es la que le estaba diciendo. El vivir es Cristo y el morir en ganancia. Let's go to Daniel 3.16 through 18. En Daniel 3, 16 al 18. You know, this is um, when they, they, told, they told Sadrach, Meshach, Abednego, he's like, hey, you guys have to bow to this God. If not, we're going to throw you in the fire furnace. Le dijeron a, Daniel, a Sadrach, Meshach, Abednego, si ustedes no adoran a este ídolo, los vamos a echar al horno. Los vamos a hacer pastel. We're going to bake you. And this is what they said, and I love it. Zadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. Hold on right there. Me encanta este versículo. So they're about to be thrown into the fire furnace. They're not going to bow to their, to their God. No se van a, a, a adorar al, al Dios de ellos, ¿ok? Y están a punto de echarlos al horno. Y dice, Zadrach, Meshach, y Abednego dicen, O oh, Nabucodonosor, querido Nabu, 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 Nabu. No nos necesitamos defender delante de ti. Verse 17. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. Stop right there, okay? Do you understand? There is no fear of death whatsoever in these young men. No hay ni una gota del temor de la muerte en esos hombres. They have threatened them with the greatest threat anybody can threaten you, right? Death. Los acaban de amenazar con, la, con, con el, el, el temor más grande, que es el temor a la muerte. Y dice, si nos echas al horno, nuestro Dios al que servimos nos puede salvar, y nos puede rescatar de tu poder, tu majestad. But check this out. Verse 18. But... Even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Verso 18 dice, Aún si no nos salva, queremos dejarte bien clarito, su majestad, que nunca serviremos a tus dioses ni adoraremos a la estatua de oro que has puesto. I mean, what? That's like... I, I mean, I take my hat off for these guys. Me quito el sombrero por esto. I mean, that is, you know, no fear of death. Ahí no hay temor de la muerte. And so many people are holding back on the gospel and holding back on talking about Jesus because they're not going to be thrown into a, a literal fiery furnace. They might get just a bunch of hate comments on their Facebook page or, you know, whatever. And that's enough to scare them. 
You know? Pero y, y tanta gente no está siendo amenazada en que los vayan a echar al horno de fuego, sino que tal vez les pongan unos comentarios feos en su página de Facebook ahí o lo que sea, y eso es suficiente para espantarlos. I mean, we live in a different world. Vivimos en un mundo diferente. We're afraid to open up our mouth, and I'm not saying again to, to be rude or anything like that, but you know, we're afraid to say something in love because what people might say or think about us, you know, oh, they call me a hater. No van a decir que soy de los odiosos. Y nos da miedo o pena abrir la boca. Whether we live or die, our job is to stand on the truth of the gospel. Muramos o vivamos, nuestro trabajo es pararnos firmes en la verdad del Evangelio. Number six, Jesus won the ultimate triumph. We no longer fight for victory, but we fight from victory and that is a game changer Jesús ganó el triunfo más grande número 6 ya no luchamos por la victoria sino que luchamos desde la victoria esto cambia todo todo ok so have you ever uh, recorded a like a, 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 a football game and watched it later alguna vez han grabado un juego y, y lo vieron y, y lo vieron después anybody You know, t vote something like that. No, nobody. I guess that's why you guys are in church. You're not that kind of people. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a good thing. <laughs> no. no, I don't either. <laughs> not funny. No, I'm just okay. Whatever. Um, so what happens when you're, you know, you record a game? And then, before you watch it, somebody tells you the final score. ¿Qué pasa cuando grabas un juego y antes de verlo, alguien te dice el score final? Doesn't it change everything? ¿No cambia todo? Why? Because you already know what happens at the end. Porque ya sabes lo que pasa al final. See, when you don't know what happens at the end of the game, you're at the edge of your seat, like biting your nails, to seeing if your team is going to make it or not. Cuando no sabes el final, estás sentado a la orilla del sillón, ¿sí? con toda tu atención, porque no sabes si tu equipo lo va a hacer o no lo va a hacer. But if you already know the score, you kick back, you go get more water, you go get more popcorn, you go get, you know, you go get more candy, you know. Pero si ya sabes el, 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 el score final, te levantas por más palomitas, por más agua, por más dulce. You're at rest when you already know the victory, when you already know the score. Estás en descanso. Isn't that true? You're not like this anymore. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? You already know. Ya no estás preocupado. ¿Qué va a pasar? ¿Qué va a pasar? Ya sabes qué va a pasar. So why do you live your life like this? ¿Por qué vives tu vida así preocupado a veces? We already know. Right there it tells us, Jesus won the ultimate triumph. We no longer have to fight for victory. Now we fight, but we fight from victory. Ya no luchamos por victoria, sino que luchamos desde de una posición de victoria. Colossians 2.15 says, In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authority. He shamed them by publicly publicly by his victory over them on the cross. See, ¿Sí? Dice aquí en Colosenses 2.15, de esta manera él desarmó a las fuerzas espirituales y a los principados y los avergonzó públicamente con su victoria sobre ellos en la cruz. It is done, it is finished, we win. Ya fue terminado, se acabó, ganamos. You can rest the rest of your life and you don't have to worry about death and you don't have to worry about having to survive. Ya, no te, ya puedes descansar el resto de tu vida. Ya no tienes que preocuparte por obtener victoria. Now we take territory from a place of victory. We already know. Tomamos territorio desde un lugar de victoria. Ya no tienes que preocuparte o tener miedo a la muerte o qué va a pasar con mi vida. You have it made. Ya la tienes hecha. Have you ever said that of somebody's life that had it really good and you go, oh, they had it made. ¿Alguna vez has dicho eso de la vida de alguien que, 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 
tienen todos los recursos y dices, oh, ya tienen la vida hecha ellos. Yeah. You too, tú también. You just gotta learn how to rest and walk in royalty. Live life, take victory, I mean, take territory from a place of rest. Como caminar en descanso, como tomar territorio desde un lugar de descanso. See, you never see royalty stressing out like that. Nunca ves a la realeza estresados así. How do you see him walking? Oh, I see him walking. Siempre los ves caminando así, bien descansando, ¿verdad? Nunca los ves estresado, ¿verdad? Siempre. You know, like, Hakuna Matata, no worries. Sin preocuparse. Es como hay que vivir, a vivir así. You're learning something tonight? ¿Estás aprendiendo algo esta noche? Number seven. What we believe to be our most fearful stumbling block is actually the door to our greatest victory. Número siete. Lo que creemos que es nuestro temor más grande es de hecho la puerta a nuestra victoria más grande. Number eight. Courage is the ability to advance in the face of adversity. You know why you can do that? Because fear has no hold on you. Número ocho, la valentía es la habilidad de avanzar en frente de la adversidad. ¿Y sabes por qué puedes avanzar en frente de la adversidad? Porque el temor no tiene poder sobre ti. Por si el temor tiene temor sobre ti, el temor te hace paralizarte. Because if fear has a hold on you, fear paralyzes you. Very simple. We've all seen the movie when the person is running from someone and they run in the middle of the street and they see a car and you go, keep going! And they go, ah! And they stop in front of the car. Why? Because fear paralyzes you. And then... Todos han visto la película, ¿no? Cuando viene la persona corriendo de, un, de alguien, ¿sí? Y entran al medio de la calle y viene un carro y ¿qué hacen? Se paralizan en vez de seguir corriendo. ¿Por qué? Porque el temor paraliza. Let's go to Revelations 12, 11. Vamos a ir a Apocalipsis 12, 11. It says, And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb. Say with me, the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Okay, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. <laughs> That's awesome. Dice Apocalipsis 12, 11, dice, y ellos lo derrotaron por la sangre del Cordero y la palabra de su testimonio. Y no amaron a sus vidas demasiado que tuvieran miedo de morir. <laughs> ¿A poco no es increíble? Isn't it amazing? Like, it says it right there. So, here is... The three things it, it, it talks about right here in Revelation 12.11. Las tres cosas de las que habla aquí en Apocalipsis 12.11. First of all, these are the things that our victory is in. Aquí está nuestra victoria. First, the blood of the Lamb. So we live from His victory instead of trying to get victory. Okay, we got to get that really clear. If you're ever trying to get victory or earn or gain victory, you're not in grace because He already gained victory. Okay? So you fight from a place of victory. Yes, we see, we're seeking the manifestation. We're seeking, you know, the healing. We're seeking, we're waiting for these things. But it cannot be from a place of, I, you know, we have to get it. You already have it. It has to be from a place of rest. He already attained it. He got the victory. We are standing on the word to see it manifest. Entonces, um, número nueve, nuestra victoria está en estas tres cosas. Primero, la sangre del Cordero, ok? Así que vivimos de su victoria. Vivimos de su victoria en vez de tratar de obtener la victoria, ok? 
Él ya obtuvo la victoria. Nosotros vivimos de ese lugar de victoria. Nuestra mentalidad es de victoria, lo que nos permite descansar. Ten. B, okay, the second thing is our victory is in the word of their testimony. Nuestro, nuestra victoria está en letra B, número 10, la palabra de su testimonio. Which remind us the, reminds us the exploits he's done for his people. Okay. Esta palabra del testimonio nos recuerda las maravillas que le ha hecho por su pueblo. Los testimonios son la fundación para sus gloriosos hechos en el futuro. Testimonies are the foundation for his glorious acts in the future. Okay, I want you guys to get this part really, really clear. Quiero que aprendan esta parte muy clara. Testimonies are not just, are not just for like, oh, yay. Okay, testimonies are powerful because they're part of our victories. Los testimonios no solamente son de, ay, qué padre que le pasó eso. Sí, que bueno. Pero los testimonios son parte de nuestras victorias también. Los testimonios otros. Okay, because right here says that it was by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Es la palabra de su testimonio. Okay, so let, uh, to understand this better, let's go to uh, Revelation 19.10 and Apocalipsis 19.10. Te voy a explicar esto un poco mejor. Dice, It says, then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you are. Like you and your brothers and sisters testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God. For the, okay, so listen. For the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. I'm actually going to read a different version. Voy a leer otra versión diferente. Um, Jesus... <clears throat> The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. El testimonio de Jesús es el espíritu de la profecía. Y por mucho tiempo no entendí esto. For a long time I did not understand this. En el verso 10 al final dice, Porque el testimonio de Jesús es el espíritu de la profecía. Okay? El testimonio de Jesús es el espíritu de la profecía. Um, at the end of verse 10, I'm going to read you, mine is, let's see, NIV, okay? It says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus, okay, is the spirit of prophecy. So what this is telling us is that testimonies of what God did are speaking and prophesying, okay, of what he's going to do again. Lo que nos está diciendo aquí, lo voy a decir otra vez, es que los testimonios de lo que Él hizo, de sus grandezas, no solamente están en el pasado, sino que hablan y profetizan de lo que Él va a hacer y quiere hacer en las vidas de otros o nuestras vidas. That's what that means, that the, uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Eso es lo que quiere decir que el testimonio de que el testimonio de Jesús es el espíritu de profecía. Okay? So here's an example. If God did something amazing for me, that's my testimony. That's the spirit of prophecy. And that is prophesying and speaking to others that if he did it for me, he will do it for you. See, something that he did in the past for me now becomes a prophetic word, you know, for something that he wants to do in your life. Algo que Él hizo en mi vida o en la vida de algunos de ustedes, ahora es un espíritu de profecía que habla y dice, esa es la voluntad de Dios y quiere hacer eso en tu vida. Because He did it once, He will do it again. Si lo hizo una vez, lo hará otra vez. That's why testimonies are so important, because God never goes like, look what I did for Rodrigo, I'm not doing that for you. Porque Dios no diría, mira lo que yo hice por Rodrigo, pero por ti no lo voy a hacer. No, that's not true, right? That's not what it says. Eso no dice la palabra. It's like a receipt. Es como un recibo. But see, the attitude is very different than, oh, why'd you do it for Dalia and not for me, God? Gosh, she always gets everything. Right? <laughs> Pero es muy diferente la actitud de envidia. Y que dice, ay, ¿por qué lo hiciste por Dalia y por mí no lo hiciste? Siempre le toca a ella lo mejor y a mí no. Right? 
Instead, in a culture of honor, we learn to celebrate each other. In una cultura donde nos celebramos el otro, decimos, wow, God, thank you for doing that for her. That's amazing. You know? And if you did it for her, you'll do it for me too. Because we're not in poverty mentality. There's enough, more than enough for everyone, right? Porque no estamos en una mentalidad de pobreza, sino que sabemos que hay más que suficiente para todos. The one that cannot rejoice with the other one is because he thinks God is limited in resources and if he gave it to her, well, now there's less for me. El que piensa, oh, si lo hizo por ella, pues seguro ya no hay tanto para mí, está operando bajo la mentalidad de pobreza, pensando que Dios es un Dios de recursos limitados. And you guys, this is good stuff. Está bueno. So, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. El testimonio de Jesús es el espíritu de profecía. And C, y letra C, they did not love their lives unto death. Right? No fear of death. When, they fear, uh, when the fear of death is broken in our lives, we become an unstoppable force and the devil can no longer scare and paralyze us with death. He becomes powerless in our lives. Y número 11, la letra C, eh, la tercera cosa es que dice, ellos no amaron tanto sus vidas como para tenerle miedo a la muerte. Cuando el temor de la muerte es quebrado de nuestras vidas, nos convertimos en una fuerza imparable y el diablo ya no puede espantar y paralizarnos con la muerte. Él pierde su poder en nuestra vida. You want to make the devil powerless in our lives? Is it... Okay, go ahead. Okay, you know what? Hold on one second. I'm going to give you a microphone, but give me one minute. Okay, so he... The, imagine this, if the devil had any power in your life, he loses it when you have no more fear of death. Si tú tenías algo de temor en tu vida, el diablo lo pierde cuando ya no tienes temor de la muerte. Because what's he going to threaten you with? Heaven? ¿Con qué te va a amenazar? ¿Con el cielo? Bring it on. <laughs> he can't. No tiene. He's lost his hold on you. Ha perdido su garra sobre ti. Listen to me. Okay, this is very real for me. Esto es muy real para mí. If I parent using the devil's tools, si yo crío a mis hijos con las armas del diablo, and I use threat and fear as one of my tools, y uso el temor y la amenaza como una de mis herramientas, I mean, first of all, I'm teaching them the wrong thing, right? But what happens when they go, fine, just spank me? ¿Qué pasa cuando dicen, ah, ya, dame las nalgas? Fine, ground me for the rest of my life. Y dicen, ah, oh, castigame el resto de mi vida. And there's no more fear of that threat. It's like, you lost your hold on them. You lost your grip on them. Si ya no tienes... Eh, eh, si ya no hay amenaza y ya no temen la amenaza de estar castigados o de que le vayan a una nalgada o que les van a quitar el celular, ¿qué pasa? Perdiste tu poder sobre ellos. That's why God doesn't parent that way either. God doesn't parent with fear. Por eso Dios no, no nos trata con temor tampoco. But yet many times we were either raised or we raised kids with those same tools. Pero muchas veces nos educaron a nosotros y nosotros educamos con esas mismas herramientas. I mean, whoops, right? But the, the point here is that when the devil has no more grip of fear over your life, he loses his power over you. What's he going to threaten you with? You become unstoppable. Cuando el diablo pierde las garras de temor sobre tu vida... ¿Con qué te va a amenazar? Te conviertes, te haces imparable. What's he going to threaten you with? Making a fool of yourself or praying for people in the, in the supermarket and, and seeing miracles happening? ¿Con, ¿Con qué te va a amenazar? ¿Con que vayas a ser el oso o te vaya a avergonzar porque oraste por gente en el supermercado por, y viste milagros y sanidades? You know, it's that voice that's always threatening us. What is people going to think about you? 
Es la voz de temor que siempre te está amenazando. ¿Qué va a pensar la gente acerca de ti? What if you pray and nothing happens? ¿Qué tal que ahora si nada pasa? What if they say no? I don't want you to pray for me. ¿Qué tal si dicen no? No quiero que ores por mí. It's all fear based. Todo es temor. And it's sad that it takes that little to hold us back. Y es triste que toma tan poquito el frenarnos. Okay, so I want to hear testimony. Carlos, please, come on, come on, come tell us. And if, if uh, in a minute, I'm going to ask for another testimony from the whole series of what you learned. Y en un minuto más voy a pedir un testimonio de lo que aprendiste de toda la serie, o si algo te impactó, or what's the thing that most impacted you. Thank you. Yes, I will. Yeah, a lot of years ago, I was afraid of death. Hace muchos años yo tenía miedo de la muerte. But... Uh, Back in October of last year, en octubre del año pasado, uh, when I went to the cardiologist, they, they told me that uh, I had an artery that's 80% clogged. Pero cuando fui al cardiólogo me dijeron que tenía una arteria 90% tapada. And that there was nothing they could do about it. Y que no hay nada que podían hacer al respecto. But uh, at that point I went before God and I, and I said, Lord, you know. Y fui delante de Dios. I'm not afraid of dying anymore. I y said, dije, Dios, yo no tengo miedo de morir. But I'm not ready. Pero no estoy listo. I'm not ready to go yet. Good. Pero no estoy listo para irme. And then, and then I, says, I said to God, I said, Lord, the only thing that bothers me about death is, is grasping for that last breath of life. Y dijo, Señor, lo único que me molesta de la muerte es ese último respiro por vida. And he spoke to me very clearly and he said, Y me habló claramente y me dijo, You never stop breathing. Me dijo, nunca dejas de respirar. You just come home when I call you. Simplemente vienes a casa cuando te llamo. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Maravilloso, Maravilloso. So, I, I love that. See, no fear death, but he's like, I'm not ready to go. And, and I feel the same way. I'm like, God, you know, I'm done with these suicide Christians that are just asking for the Lord to come all the time. I'm like, there is way too much work to be done and way too many people that need to know him still. Digo, hay muchos cristianos que dicen, Señor, ya ven, y son los cristianos suicidas, ¿verdad? Ya ven, Señor, ya ven. Y digo, Señor, sí, quiero que vengas, pero hay tanto trabajo que hacer y todavía tanta gente que no te conoce. So, we value the gift of life, but death has no hold on us. Pero la muerte no tiene uh, agarre sobre nosotros. So, I, I want to do this real quick. We have a few minutes left. Quiero que hagamos esta activación. Tenemos unos minutos que nos quedan. Um, if you get the book... There is a, the Popper to Prince test. I would encourage you to take it again if you haven't already. And if not, take it for the first time. En el libro or, or online, it's also there, okay? En el libro o en línea está la prueba del de, examen de, de pobre a príncipe. Si lo tomaste antes, te animo que lo tomes otra vez. Take it again. Be honest with yourself. See how much of your mind has been renewed in the last five weeks. De cuando, de, cuánto de tu mente ha sido renovado en las últimas cinco semanas, and just see like, you know, wow, I used to think this way, now I really think this way, right? You're going from pauper to prince. Vas de, de pobre a príncipe, okay? ¿Cuánto de tu mentalidad ha cambiado, right? And then review your notes. That's why I spent hours on these beautiful notes. Por eso pasé horas en estas notas hermosas. We're filling the blank sometimes as a comma because I don't want you to miss it. Cuando a veces la coma era lo que había que llenar, porque no quiero que te lo pierdas. So, review your notes. If you're missing one, they're in the back. Um, si te falta alguna de estas, están ahí atrás. And just study this and be like, okay, you know, here's where I need to adjust. Here's where I need to renew my mind, right? Aquí es donde tengo que ajustar. Aquí es donde tengo que renovar mi mente, right? We need to learn to walk in our royalty. That's our nature that God has given us. Nuestra realeza es la naturaleza que Dios nos ha dado. 